So let's dive into unit testing now. Uh, and the first question is, what is the unit we are testing? And very often, we are talking about classes as a single unit in object-oriented programs uh, and functions or operations. So kind of a single unit of computation. And there are different strategies on, on how do you test uh, in order to find defects, because if you remember, defect testing is about trying to cover as much as possible. And if you consider, for example, a class, so I just use UML here, uh, you, well, have a class name, you have a certain number of attributes, for example, you might have something that is called an ID, uh, maybe a name, so different kinds of attributes, and then you have operations. Do a uh, do be, and they might have, of course, parameters, return values, and so on. So the strategy for testing a class, if this is our unit, is to say, well, we should try to set, uh, modify, and read all of the attributes, right? Can we read them? Can we somehow set them, get them, modify them? Uh, is that possible in the way we would like to do? Uh, and of course, maybe some of them should not be settable, then we should not test that maybe. Uh, for operations, we try to test them. Well, we should call all of these operations and we should try to test them with different input essentially. So if they have parameters, for example, is there uh, anything we can vary there? Uh, we can, for example, put regular kind of expected input in there, but we can also do uh, unexpected or uh, simply wrong, erroneous cases input, null, undefined, or so on. Uh, and then finally, if we look at the class as a whole, uh, classes sometimes, not always, uh, but if you instantiate a class, it sometimes might have a state uh, that it can change over time. So then this is also something we would like to cover. So can we vary the state so that we actually visit the class in all different uh, states and see whether it's possible. Now uh, some heuristics in particular for, for kind of setting values or for input parameters are uh, a number of things that typically go wrong and some of them is for example uh, zero or one length sequences. So imagine you have as an input, as a parameter, you have an array, for example, that you put in. Uh, typical bugs include issues where the, the code assumes that there is at least one or at least two elements. So for example, in the code, you might, have a, you might access the first element without even checking that there is one. Uh, so by writing tests that, that uh, include these cases, you very often find errors. Uh, so that's a heuristic that's simply based on typical mistakes that happen. Uh, other things are, for example, uh, buffer overflows. That's, again, a very common thing. So you try to simply put, basically put too much into an operation. Uh, your implementation expects that there will be a top thousand elements and you put something with 10,000 in, maybe something goes wrong uh, and you will get some errors. S very similar uh, is to use elements at, uh, at the end of a range. So for example, uh, assume that you have an integer value. What happens in most programming languages if you take the maximum integer number and you add one is that it wraps around and it starts at the bottom. So the question is, is the operation able to handle that? And well, this is again something that happens very often that people forget about that. So by using very large or very small uh, elements, this is something that typically gets exposed. So max minimum elements in a certain data type uh, is something. And then finally, this is something I have already men uh, mentioned, is sort of the, the undefined things. So for example, null, undefined, uh, depending on the programming language you use, it could be different kind of things that you could put in there. So that's sort of trying out different inputs that 
from experience often lead to mistakes. So these are mistakes we often make uh, in programming. And this often sounds trivial. So when you present this, it's like, yeah, who wouldn't make these mistakes? But these things happen, and they even happen to professional programmers that have done these over the years, uh, simply because it's sometimes so easy to forget. So it's, it's really, even though these heuristics are quite basic, it's quite a powerful instrument to follow these. So don't underestimate them. Then uh, the final concept I would like to mention here before we, we get on to the next video is the, the concept of partition testing. So very often uh, you have an input that you can divide into a number of classes. For example, again, let's assume we have an integer. Uh, for example, for minus 10 till 0, uh, for 1 till 100, and for everything over 100, you expect kind of three different outputs. For example, for this, you kind of expect that the, the return value will be, let's say, true. Uh, you expect that for this it will be false. And you expect that here you actually get something like, I don't know, void. You might get an exception or something else. Again, maybe it depends on the programming language. Uh, and so basically, instead of having to test all possible integer values, you actually have partitioned your input space into different groups, into different boxes or classes. Uh, and then the strategy would be to say, well, you choose a typical value from each of these classes. So we write a test with input minus 5, 10, 200, typical elements. Uh, and we check whether we actually get the expected results. And additionally, because that's a, a case where errors happen very often, we check the edges uh, of our partitions, the borders. So how about we put zero in, we put one in, we put 100, 100, one in. Uh, simply because similar to the zero and one length, it happens so easily that, for example, in your code, instead of a larger than 100, you suddenly have a larger equals. Mistakes that happen very often. Uh, but basically, suddenly, instead of having to write basically a, a number of tests that is equal to the number of integers, you have broken this down into three classes. Uh, so you basically need to test three different values plus maybe the edge values, which is much, much fewer tests than if you try to somehow go through there. So that's a strategy if you can apply that by basically discretizing, breaking down your input space into boxes into different classes. Uh, and of course the integer case is very easy. This might be trickier if you have a string as an input, if you have a number of different parameters. So uh, of course in practice that's not always easy, but at least it helps you to think about what might be uh, good cases that I can test. So this is a concept that is called partition testing. Uh, that is something that can help you. And overall these heuristics, partition testing, and the strategy how to test the class, uh, that at least gives you some kind of idea where to start if you're sitting and thinking about what should I write, what kind of unit tests. So overall, this helps you to cover a large extent of cases. Uh, and now in the next video, we'll talk more about this coverage. What does it actually mean to cover a lot of code?